Hi, I'm going to talk about the new remote assistance feature released on Intune a few days ago, Intune Remote Help. As with most of my videos, I'm going to be configuring this for the first time, and you'll see me make mistakes and get things wrong because either the interface doesn't work or because I'm not paying attention. If I get things wrong, sorry, but hopefully that'll help you not make mistakes when you configure this for the first time in your environment. Also, I wanted to point out that we record a live stream every second Tuesday. And you're welcome to join that. We usually have a speaker talking about something cloud management related. And it would be awesome if you came along and joined us for that. You don't need to subscribe. But if you would like to be reminded that we are running this and, and be notified when we go live, just subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. And we'll give you a shout when we go live. Anyway, back to remote help. Okay, what I'm going to do first is show you how you can configure remote help in your environment. We'll briefly go through what it is and how you can use it and then we'll show it in use in a, a test and lab environment. Firstly, we need to create a group um, for our remote help admins. So we're going to go to groups, choose new group, and then give it a name of remote help admins. And I'm going to assign my admin account just here. So we've created the group and now we need to assign some uh, permissions to that group, which is going to be in roles, create and we're going to call it remote help admins and choose next and scroll down to remote help app and choose yes yes and yes and that's for elevation so we use it so administrators can elevate um, and enter their USE credentials when the user is not an admin view the screen permissions and take full control we'll choose next next and create once that's done, we just need to go back into that and choose assignments and then assign it to the group that we created earlier on. Give it a name, remote help admins, add the group just like that. Choose next, next. And we need to decide who these admins can help just because I want the admins to be able to help everyone. I'm going to choose all users and all devices. We'll choose next, next and create. Okay, over to administration. You can see we've got connectors and tokens and at the top we've got remote help preview uh, i've done a bit of testing here as you can see um, just earlier on we'll choose settings and you can see i've got and this set to enabled and this set to allowed so enable remote help is set to enabled and that allows you to assist users on enrolled devices and then you've got allow remote help to unenrolled devices and that allows you to assist users on unenrolled devices. Crucially, it, it probably will be your users that you're assisting, uh, but they're on unenrolled devices. So we choose allowed on that and then choose save. Very good. So that's pretty much all you need to do. Apart from then you need to download the, um, the remote help app to your users computers. So if we take a look at the documentation, which is just here, uh, you can see we've got this download remote help app when you click that it will download the remote help executable so i've done a bit of prep just to make this a bit more seamless for you and uh, if we look at the uh, folders i've got here you get this you don't you get this file here remote help.exe and if we just run a uh, command prompt here open terminal there you go um so if we open command prompt there and just type remote help slash question mark you can see we've got these options so install uh installs it passive acquired um and uh no restart and stuff so what i'll do is just show you what happens if we try doing remote help slash install slash quiet um and i'll let you into a secret it's uh it prompts you for uac and does absolutely nothing it doesn't install at all. Uh, there was a little uh, post on Twitter that Dan Stradling, uh, one of the one of the, the guys in who runs our lives with us, um, he pointed out that that's not the command you have to use. So there's a bit of extra stuff you need to type on here, which is accept terms equals yes. I think it's that. So I'm gonna just run that. And firstly, just to show you, there is no uh, remote help app installed here on my computer. I'm just going to move that back over there 
type this command, get the USC prompt, and the remote help app is installed according to this. And if we jump over to, and if we jump over to our start menu and launch the app, you can see we've got this application here. I've signed in with my administrator account for my tenant, the one that I've given permission to. Okay, so this is installed on my admin machine, but we also need to be able to push this out to end user devices. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, package this up. So you can see I've got it called Unpackage. I've got the Win app util here. We are going to open that, and we've got the source folder just here, which is unpackaged. I'm going to do that. Got the setup file called Remote help.exe and uh, the output folder is called remote help unpack remote help packaged uh, already done this once to test as you can see so there it is good so we've got that created fine so let's jump into our um, Intune admin center and go to all apps add and we're going to create a win32 app select the app package file just like that choose ok and call it remote help and it's published by microsoft we need to install we need an install command which is remote help dot xe slash install slash quiet quiet and then accept terms equals yes. The uninstall command is simply uninstall. Do we choose next? And the requirement is 64 bit 20H2. And we're going to manually configure the detection rules. And uh, the rules for me, the one I'm going to choose right now is going to be a file. And the path is going to be remote help and the file or folder is going to be that the detection method is that the file or folder exists choose ok and next 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 and we're going to assign to all devices choose next and create okay so that's just being uploaded now give that a few moments and we'll come back and hopefully see it install on my device all right so if i just quickly flick over to my lab computer, choose sync. I think it's just installed. I give it a few moments. So it's installed the Intune management extension and remote help. So that's great. So the user's got it installed, which is fantastic. So let's see how we actually use this. From the user point of view, what I'm gonna do is just move this user over here and choose remote help. It'll ask the user to sign in. You need to use an organizational account to use remote help. And so it automatically signs them in because they are signed into the computer. They get the option to give or get help. They are likely to be the ones requesting help. Now this user does not have admin privileges. When they choose uh, to run admin, it asks for their user account control elevation and they haven't got it. So they're potent potentially stuck and need some admin help. If we look at our admin over here, what I'm going to do here is using my admin account, I'm going to choose get a security code and we're given a security code that I can use to give help to my lucy.tester user. So the code is 903056. I'll choose submit. And what you'll see is some kind of handshake. The helper is asked if we want to connect to the user so the person you're helping is ready we're going to choose take full control and then on the user side we see that they are asked if this is the right person trying to take control and they get to choose allow so now what we'll see is that this screen disappears on the left hand side and we're given this outlined window here and on the admin side, let's move it over for a second, you can see we've got a good view of the user's screen with a cursor. 
So I'm going to move that over to my right hand screen and you can see what happens on the left hand screen while I do things in this window here. So for example, I'm going to choose start menu. I'm doing this on the admin side. So if I go over to my admin screen here, you can see we've got admin just there. And I can do things like right click and task manager. And obviously that's taking effect on the screen on the left there. We have some options at the top here so we can get to choose a monitor. I only have one, it's a virtual machine. So um, that's that. We get to annotate, which is pretty cool. We get to, um, for example, draw a square around that and say click here and then click here, for example. And those uh, annotations stay on the screen even when you exit that. Uh, no, they don't. They disappear when you click exit annotation. Um, so you uh, can also do actual size, which in this screen doesn't actually make any difference at all because it's a lower resolution. And you can also do something called instruction channel. So I can um, give some instructions here and send that over. And then on the user side, as you can see, they get um, a message, uh, but you can also send commands and that kind of thing. You can, so it's an option to copy here and then you can paste the message that was sent. So if we click that and we've got an option of task manager. So if I click task manager, hopefully you'll see task manager appear just there like it was earlier on. Nice and quick, easy button to get to in case, um, in case the issue the user's having is, is that their computer's locked out and they're not able to use the mouse for whatever reason. Um, you can also pause, stop, and uh, see more details around these buttons, actually. Uh, you can see it says user is not in administrator mode. Let's see what happens when we try and elevate. So I'm going to try and run PowerShell as admin. And what it's done is prompted on the user's screen, as you can see there, and on my screen. Uh, well, it's it's the same screen because I'm sharing it, but it's given me the opportunity to start typing. I'm just going to check on my user screen. I want to see if I can type in there. I can type in there. And on the right hand screen, I'm going to try and type. I can type there. So I'm going to go with my admin. So when we choose yes, we run as admin. And as you can see, if I type who am I, you should probably see that we're running as the ad, the mod administrators. That's the this user that I was running in earlier on. Good. So then you can perform admin tasks from here and do whatever fixing that needs to be done. One thing that is worth mentioning, and it is mentioned in the documentation, is that when you exit a session that is running in elevated mode, so when you've given your when you've you've typed in your admin credentials in UAC. When you apparently when you stop this session, it will uh, sign the user out. So you meant to tell the user that they are going to lose their work if they don't save it. For example, so let's just try that. I'm going to choose um, stop on this side, and we'll see what happens on the user side. Uh, it says screen sharing has ended, and uh, close, and then it signs you out. So. That's interesting to know, and it's good to know. Uh, they weren't giving a given a warning on that, or asked to save their work. It was just a straight, yeah, we're gone. Um, so, for what it's worth, the the experience is exactly the same on devices that are not enrolled in MEM, and uh, it's probably not worth showing you that because it's the process is exactly the same. So uh, that that's pretty much it. Uh, I think it's it's. Good. It's a worthwhile tool to install. It's a bit fiddly. It could do with being an MSI or a store app and certainly installed by default on Windows 11. But uh, it's a step forward because TeamViewer was, you know, an additional license as well and also a bit clumsy. Um, but again, this is in preview, so we'll see what the costs are going to be in the future on this. For now, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.